How would it feel if I said this episode is all about how to carve out time for yourself every day to feel more like yourself? Are you excited to dive in? Because you know I am. Today's chat encompasses the importance of having a morning routine for yourself, more specifically, a morning mindset routine. Now, I have been on both ends of the spectrum here, being woke up by my children and rolling out of bed reactive to everything coming at me the second I wake up, to getting up before the rest of the house, to not only having some connection time to me, but also to be intentional and proactive to allow the rest of the day to just go much smoother, right? Internally and externally. So join me as we talk about how to create your ideal morning routine and what habits I believe are great ones to anchor into that rhythm. Let's dive in. Hey mama, welcome to the Balanced Mom Method podcast. I know you're here because you're tired of living day after day like you're drowning in the responsibilities of motherhood. You're done struggling with trying to find the time and energy to get it all done every day. And you want to show your little ones a good example, but you're so exhausted, which has your negative self-talk on repeat, your patience spread thin, and you feel like you're losing yourself a little more every day. Plus, the mom guilt, societal comparison game, and unpredictabilities of motherhood just does not help in trying to make a change. Well, sweet friend, this podcast will guide you on how to connect with yourself to break free from that survival mode cycle, all by identifying and possibly simplifying your habits. Hey, I'm Jenna, and I've been where you are. I was consumed in the struggles of motherhood, and I needed to make a change to take back control of my time, energy, identity, and life. And in finding that freedom, it became my mission to help make that connection with moms that we can give our children and families the best and not at the expense of our own health, self, and well-being. Moms shouldn't have to choose between their families, priorities, and themselves. We can balance it all, and it all starts within ourselves. Let me take your hand and make that connection with you and equip you with simple, lifelong habits. If you are ready to say goodbye to just surviving and finally reclaim your life and motherhood, then you are in the right place. Let's get to the root of cultivating real change because it's time to feel like you again. Warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds, and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's overcome together. Hello, hello, beautiful. I am so thankful that you're here with me today on the show. I'm like already using my hands here. I'm so excited. (laughs) But I want to get right into the nitty right away because y'all know a lot of the balanced mom method, it's tangible, sure, but it's more so it pushes you to take away the tips and take away the strategies and principles that I share and then do the life work to make it functional in your life, right? Because we're all so different. We're on different journeys in life and motherhood and just different seasons that we all go through within our life. And that's where I want to start right now in seasons. It's funny that I felt called to share about morning routines when the past 15 months of my life I have not been consistent in them, (laughs) but that just goes to show that the the transparency here, as well as that lack of perfectionism and the constant growth that even professionals and experts and teachers and mentors and coaches and whomever that you might look up to, we also go through seasons and we all have to go through growth and turbulence and hardship to be able to come out on top. And I just shared, I have to look at my phone really quick. I just shared, whenever I work out, I, I'll share to like my Instagram story, the workout that I do. And then I share like a uh, like a quote to go with it. And I, it just like popped in my head right now. So I had to, I, I wanna share this quote that I shared today because it's it just fits so perfectly. And what I'm saying here is meet the chaos around you with the peace within you. Meet the chaos around you with the peace within you. Now it just goes to show like we all... We all go through life, like life has its ebbs and flows, its ups and downs, the tough seasons, the not so tough seasons, you know, the bliss, the euphoria. But the importance is, you know, we all go through that. We all have to accept that, take responsibility for that. But it's the peace within, it's the joy within, it's the perception within how we respond and react and live through all of those moments, all those seasons. Big time tangent, reeling it back in to a morning mindset routine, but I thought that was a good little segue, right? So my morning mindset routine, it has been one thing that I have missed so dearly after having both of my children because neither one of them slept through the night well at all, like well past, you know, a year of age. And I tried to power through it with my first 
and it was just a train wreck because I was not getting adequate sleep. I was very much like the lethargic, chronic fatigue. And when I started learning about meeting our needs, you know, connecting to myself and meeting my needs too and ridding that outside noise and expectations of the world because I felt that I had to like hustle myself to the ground and wear this badge of honor for having only a few hours of sleep because, hey, you know, I'm here on my 5 a.m. accountability Zoom. Like it it was a big realization to me. Like I I needed to take that step back and stop trying to show the perfectionism or show that badge of honor and 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 meet these expectations that I didn't even feel felt right within my life, right? My son has saved me in so many ways and has changed my perspectives on a lot of deep-rooted foundational life work habits. He's he's changed the perspective of how I view the world. And it I I, I will not say that lightly because it is 100% true. Becoming a mother has changed me so much for the better. And learning to connect back to me versus those societal expectations, it's been pivotal in growth and change and, and for the better. So with that, I am a huge advocate for number one, getting enough sleep <laughs> because I didn't get consistently enough sleep. So I didn't have that morning mindset routine for the first year of my son's life. And then again with my daughter, we're kind of just getting back into that morning mindset routine. Bless her heart. She is 15 months old today. Yay. But neither were good solid sleepers throughout the night. <laughs> and my daughter was up every hour the first year, maybe 13 months of her life. So this is, if you are in a season to where you're getting a solid six, seven, eight hours and feel rested, all right, maybe maybe not solid, <laughs> maybe, you know, not interrupted solid because I don't know how many of us truly get that as moms because my, my children are still up throughout the night. But I hope that you understand just like waking up feeling rested, you feel that you are able to implement, maybe get up early, a little bit earlier, not because of you don't feel rested, but maybe because like there might be some excuses as to why you're not getting up. That's where I'm at now. Like I feel like I'm getting a solid six, seven hours of sleep to where I know that it's just going to be hard to start this habit up again because, you know, your bed is warm and cozy. I get that. So I told myself actually this past February, my daughter was 13 months at the time. We were going on a trip out of the country and I wanted to take this transition time of being out of our normal routine anyway to move her out of, out of our bedroom to sleep in her, not her own room. She is sharing a room with her brother right now, but to help her sleep through the, through the night because I truly feel that she smelled my milk. She knew I was right there. Like it was just, it was a, it was a habit. It was routine for her. She knew that I would get her <laughs> the second she would wake up because I was five feet away from her, right? And I would just get her and nurse and go back to sleep. And that was like the cycle that we had for the first 13 months of life. So I wanted to break that that routine when we, you know, were going on vacation in hopes for me to get my morning mindset routine back consistently. But like, again, you know, jokes on me because <laughs> when we got back from Bahamas, we all got sick the week we got home and we were sick for over a month. I'm sure y'all like, you know, this past winter, I feel like our immune systems were also down coming out of the pandemic and just kind of were, were like rebooting our immune systems, right? So we were sick. We were, it was a revolving door all winter. And we were sick for over a month when we got home. Like all of us actually, besides my husband, kids and I nonstop. It was, we didn't get better until we got on antibiotics. We could not kick the symptoms for over a month. And within that kind of month of being sick and getting back into routine after being on vacation, my daughter started transitioning to one nap from two. And my son was now transitioning to no naps. So like, oh my gosh, it was it was a lot. Like this past February, March, just with lots of transitions, lots of seasonal changes, we were just all off on our routine. So once I got that glimpse of kind of like full transparency here, feeling sorry for myself, like I was full on like, what gives? I, I was just kind of a mess because we were so off on everything and we weren't feeling well. And it's like all my education and my life work, right? That, 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 that I do that root work and getting to know me and connecting to myself and how I function and how I perceive. I was like, hello, Jenna, like it's time to figure this out. Like take the tools out of your toolbox, take, you know, your coaching and all these 
amazing strategies and do it for yourself, right? I had to get to that root of why I was feeling sorry for myself. And it was 100% the normalcy of just feeling overwhelmed in a new season. Like we all go through that, right? So I had to acknowledge like we are in a new season. I don't have my nap times anymore. I to to work, right? So I was like there was just a lot of like overwhelm and unknown that I was like my whole schedule is changing. <laughs> and what you're used to doing sometimes or how you're used to living, it's just not working anymore. So I had to make a new routine with a new schedule because of our new season. And I had to give myself grace and know the difference between that grace and excuses. And we're going to get to that in a second here. So let me tell you, I have been through so many different seasons of my life. We all have. Okay. So I want to share a few pillar ones for me that maybe you can relate to in terms of, you know, the the morning routine and just the importance. I hope that I could paint this picture for you. The importance of having a morning routine. Okay. Okay. So a few pillar, you know, seasons that I've been through are rolling out of bed 20 minutes before I had to be out the door for a full days of work outside the home before I became a mom. Okay. This is when I was working at the cancer clinic. I was a radiation therapist. I would roll out of bed 20 minutes. No joke. My husband and I, terrible habits. We'd roll out of bed 20 minutes before we had to get out the door for work. I would make our lunches. It was just hot mess express. Just imagine like I could feel that rush and I'm like cringing. Like I have goosebumps just like thinking about that season of our life. And then a new season, same. I was not a mom yet. I was still working at the cancer center. We, it was same. Everything was same in life besides me changing that morning routine. I was getting up at 4 a.m. I had an hour and a half to start my day with intention, exercise, meditation, and dabbling into reading. I I vowed, this is so silly. I vowed to never read another book when I left college. How poor of a mindset is that? (laughs) But I, you know, if you, if you've gone to college, you can probably relate to just like the amount of textbook work that you have. That was like the, the space of life that I was in. Like I vowed to never read another book terrible. So I was, I was starting this growth journey, right? I was getting up at 4am. I was starting my day with intention, exercise, meditation, reading before I had to leave for a full days of work outside the home. And let me tell you, I grew leaps and bounds in like becoming an adult, let's say, right? When I started to take some responsibility for my life and for my actions to then another pivotal season is having a child and becoming a mom. Enough is said there, right? never knowing what time of day it was with a newborn. That was a whole season, whole struggle in itself. To then struggling to create, you know, I was craving that morning routine flow that I just wanted after my son was born and after he started sleeping a little bit better. I, I was like, okay, it's it's time. Like I need to get that back to finding it. Another season, getting that ideal morning routine back And then we got pregnant again. (laughs) And then you start that whole, you know, the first trimester and the nausea and the sickness. So that whole cycle, I feel like started over again. But I got that glimpse of having my morning mindset routine back while I was a mom. And it was beautiful, right? And then repeat the cycle of the newborn life, reworking back to that ideal routine. When my daughter was born, I kind of like this entire intro that I'm sharing about the season I feel that we're coming out of right now is because I'm getting my morning, ideal morning mindset routine back present. Like as I'm speaking right now, this is the season that we are in right now. And I'm so glad that you're with me today on the show. Like this is full of real life, realistic habits and a plan for you to make the most out of your days. Because why? Why is a morning routine, why is a morning mindset routine important for moms? Me, I'm raising my hand right now, being on both ends of the spectrum with kids, getting up before my children versus being woken up by them, I will say in every aspect that getting up before them, it's better for everyone. (laughs) It's better for me, but it's also better for them because they have me. They have a present me, all right? So let's start with a scenario of when I wake up to my son barging into my room or my daughter calling out ma, 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 ma from her crib, okay? Around 6 a.m. This is, it's still early enough to like feel that I'm not sleeping the day away, but I'm being woken up reactive. I woke up reactive to everything else coming at my day. 
It's like I'm already in a state of rushing and not giving my children my full attention because I'm trying to do a to-do list of things before I could feel like I actually can start my day. You know, like making the bed, going to the bathroom, letting the dog out, feeding the dog, feeding the cat, making my morning go-go juice, changing my daughter's diaper, getting them both something to drink and a pre-breakfast snack. Like heaven forbid, heaven forbid we miss that pre-breakfast snack, okay? And then I find myself keeping the morning cartoons on a little bit longer so I could gather my thoughts and my intentions and like slow back down because that was just like a chaos of a morning, okay? All those little things that we don't think about that take up time and it takes away time from, from my, ch- my children. Those mornings used to really leave me guilt tripping myself. So now envision with me waking up at 5 a.m., about an hour, maybe an hour and a half before the rest of the house. I don't make the bed yet because my husband is still sleeping, but I grab my computer, a journal, my book, and I head downstairs. It's quiet. It's still dark out. Did I mention the silence? (laughs) I let out our dog, Bill, because he always follows me downstairs. I feed him. I feed our cat, Betty. I make my go-go juice or make a cup of coffee, whatever I'm feeling. I go to the bathroom alone. Alone. Bliss. (laughs) And I cozy up on the couch with my book, journal, morning caffeine, in pure, silent bliss. And then I read I meditate, I journal, I clear my mind of anything pressing in my head or on my heart. I write my daily intentions, what I want to get done for the day. And if my kids are still sleeping, then I sneak in some intentions or some work time. Then they wake up and I get to focus solely on them, connect with them. Like it just feels so much lighter. I don't know. And this, my friend, this is perfection in my eyes. Like I woke up proactive and take, took some time for me versus reactive in a constant state of anxiousness and rush. So my advice to you is to get up just a little bit before your kids if you don't already. Create your perfect morning mindset routine. It doesn't have to be a full 90 minutes, but I will share with you a little bit of why the magic behind that number, that 90 minute number, is, is kind of magical here, okay? So I call it your morning mindset routine because this is exactly what we dive into in the Balanced Mom Method course and my coaching. It's really getting in tune with you first thing in the morning. Now, I want you to be realistic and not let excuses fool you, all right? Because I know for me to mentally be my best and feel like I have my S-H-I-T together (laughs) is to have that time in the morning for me and my self-care. I start my day with meditation and intention, and taking action to feel accomplished by 6 a.m. Even if I don't feel like getting up when that alarm clock goes off at 5 a.m., I can think how I feel after my morning mindset routine and how happy and accomplished that I feel and the presence, feeling the presence that I can have to give myself to my children when they wake up. I, I have both increased my productivity and my happiness and decreased that stress and anxiety and overwhelm and feeling like I'm putting out fires first thing in the morning just by waking up a little bit earlier. So if you struggle to find any time to and for yourself, if you feel in a constant state of rush throughout the day or have some goals but you can't find time to fit it in or, or do the work to reach them, maybe getting up a little bit earlier in the mornings can be your solution. So bear with me because remember, I went through two long as heck seasons of giving myself grace with not being so hard on myself when both of my children were babies. The first year, the first 14 months of their lives, they were not good sleepers. We did not get good sleep throughout the night. So I was not getting up in the morning and we, I don't want to call it survival mode because I still found my flow, right? And I would still get up sometimes early if I had stuff to do or if I really just needed some time with me. I knew I needed that morning mindset routine. It just wasn't like consistent, let's say. So let's walk through how to create your ideal morning mindset routine. All right, mama. So it is time to transform your morning routine to be organized and productive and energized, to feel good, to bring joy back to your day and others, to bring presence and consciousness and awareness and just all the feels back into your day, into your life. So here's how to craft your ideal morning routine 
And remember, like there's no such thing as perfection. So cut yourself some slack and accept that this is your quote unquote ideal morning routine, something that you can aim to achieve, but you still have flexibility with. All right. So number one is identify your why and your pain points, your pleasure and pain points are that driving force that will help motivate you to show up even when you don't feel like it. Start with why. Maybe your pain points will come come out, you know, as you're talking about your why. Like, why do you want to start getting up early? Is it because like everything that I shared in the past, you know, 18 minutes of being reactive, having minimal patience by 7 a.m. because you can't do anything that you want to do when your kids are in your face the very second that you all wake up, Right. And maybe if those pain points don't come out and writing out your why, be sure to ident- identify some struggles, you know, in, in this first step, okay? Because taking the time to get clear on your why and get clear on those pain points will be your biggest driver and your motivator. Because think of those mornings where your bed is cozy and warm and you just want to sleep a little bit longer. Your why, those pain points, they're going to be what gets you out of bed in the morning. So you can answer these questions. They, you might find these few questions that I'll share right now and to help, you know, in finding your why to, to getting that ideal morning routine. So why do you want to wake up before your kids and start a morning routine? What do you want to accomplish in the mornings and why? What causes you stress throughout the day and why? What's one thing you wish you had more time for during the day? What's one goal that you've been putting off because you just feel like you don't have the time? What kind of home atmosphere and culture do you want your family to have? How do you want yourself, your spouse, and your kids to feel in your home? And where do you want to be in one year from now? And what can you do to help you get there? All right, you could use those as journal prompts or just in crafting your why. Awesome. Pause me, listen back, write them down. There you go. (laughs) Number two, write it down. You have, I forgot that that was number two. That's kind of funny. Number two, write it down. You have to have your ideal morning down on paper in order to remember what it is that you want and you want to get done. And then you could visualize yourself in that routine. So write it down. What do you want your morning routine to be? Number three is start small. Our bodies thrive on consistency. So getting up at the same time and going to bed around the same time every night will help your internal clock on making this a habit. Okay. So if you have trouble, you know, with that snooze button or getting up to your alarm clock, you have to start to try to go to bed around the same time at night and wake up at the same time in the morning. Cause that internal clock that your body runs on will start to make it a habit. You may have an end goal of possibly wanting to get up 90 minutes earlier before your kids get up, but that's a very big shift. So I don't want you to completely throw your body out of whack, you know, in, initially. So if you're really having trouble with 90 minutes off the bat, maybe scale it back a little bit and start with 30 because your body might be a little out of shock, right? Your mind might not be connected yet. And you might, you know, really lean in and allow yourself to give into excuses. You might get discouraged because you're so tired and you know that that might not be like, that's not what you want, right? So your bodies need to adjust. So allow yourself that time to adjust. Just like habits take time, your body needs time to adjust also. So it's, you know, 30 minutes is a great starting point. It's enough for you to get a taste of that morning silence, that bliss, that alone time, but it won't really throw your body too much out of whack. And just getting up a little bit earlier, you could bump your bedtime just a little bit earlier. And I I mean, I know me, I'm not productive in the evenings anyway. So if I'm awake a while after my kids go to bed, It's usually, you know, that's when I spend time with my husband. So you could have a conversation with your spouse. So just give yourself some grace as you transition to that end mark of possibly a 90 minute morning routine. Okay. It does not have to be this long, but if you're wondering why I said there's a magic in that 90 minute interval, there is because our brains and bodies, we go through spurts of energy and we go through spurts of like big time focus intentionality. And then we need a break or a rest time after, quotes, 90 minutes. So from all the sources that I've researched, it seems to be that a big sweet spot for a morning routine is 50 to 90 minutes of that morning mindset because you will be a productivity and energy machine, all right? So number four is it is okay to start the night before. 
Is there anything that you can do the night before to save you more time in the morning? Like we already have to deal with our dreaded alarm clock and getting up at a certain time, right? So you can have your journal, your book, your computer downstairs already or wherever like you're, you might not, I'm talking me, right? I could already have it downstairs. So you could kind of gather your things and have it where you're going to have your morning routine in the morning. You can prep and set a timer for your coffee at night. So it brews automatically in the morning. If you're someone who works out first thing in the morning, maybe maybe sleep in your workout clothes or set them out the night before, like anything to make your life easier come that wake up time. And number five is aim to wake up at the same time every day and avoid the snooze button at all costs. Something I like to practice is called the five second rule by Mel Robbins. And it states that when you feel yourself hesitant before doing something that you can literally trick your brain by counting down from five, four, three, two, one, go and move towards that action. Because scientifically, it takes five seconds for your brain to like talk yourself out of doing something, right? Out of fear or hesitation or excuses, right? It takes about five, five seconds for your brain to like talk you out of it. So count down five, four, three, two, one, go get up out of bed. You could literally move your phone or alarm clock into another room if you have to. So you have to like get up to turn off your alarm. Boom, five seconds, you're already up. Perfect. (laughs) Number six is keep it simple in the mornings and do not plan to accomplish it all. I find myself getting into a really good groove and then one of my children will wake up. So instead of growing resentment towards, you know, my little loves waking up a little bit earlier one day than normal or something, when I was in the middle of doing something, I can tell myself, I might just have to reprioritize. Maybe I can move some tasks tonight or to nap time or while I, when I get them, you know, settled with breakfast or something, I could do, you know, some aimless task, but maybe take them out of the routine altogether. Like some things just don't have to be in your morning routine. That's why I love to call it a morning mindset routine because this is your time for you to connect to you and get your mindset right, to connect with in prayer, in meditation, whatever that is for you. So that is why the most important thing for me in the morning is my me time, my meditation time, my journal time, my reading time. So I know that that goes very first on my list once I sit down. Hence, again, I call it my morning mindset routine. Number seven is start with an easy task to transition to waking up. I know I just said that I do my mindset work first. So that's like once I actually sit down ready to start my routine. But the actual first things that I do, like I said, are I let the dog out. I feed the animals. I make my caffeine. (laughs) I drink my water. I go to the bathroom. Like those tasks are pretty simple, but they give me a good 10, 15 minutes to actually wake up to be fully present once I do sit down to do my mindset work. And if you're known to procrastinate tasks or like feel guilty of like, Oh, like I really need to do this, but I'm like dilly dallying or procrastinating or whatever that might be. I do suggest starting your morning routine with your mindset type work, because that is the most important thing in my opinion. And it also is one that we easily put on the back burner and it helps really like let the harvest those negative mindset loops when you're not doing that mindset work, right? So after that mindset routine, Also eat that frog first thing. And what I mean by eating your frog is doing the things that you dread the most, do it first. It is a big confidence boost and stress relief right off the bat, mama. And number eight is stop making excuses. You knew (laughs) that this was going to make the list. I've been like kind of dilly dallying saying it here and there, but it makes the list here. Excuses simply enable that endless cycle of guilt, resentment, and chronic starting and stopping syndrome. Revert back to your goals, revert back to your why, and make it happen. And please don't say, I'm just not a morning person. Because sister, like, we can become anything we believe we can be. No one's really a morning person, right? (laughs) So maybe there are some people, but I'm not. Like, I have to make myself one. So number nine, make it your you time. Do something that fills your cup, brings you joy, something that relaxes you. I know I just said, I do suggest doing that mindset type work, but maybe you have another time that you do your mindset work. Do something, make this morning routine something that brings you joy. And examples for me are reading a personal growth book, meditation, sipping 
coffee in silence or sipping my go-go juice in silence while writing in my journal. Like, oh my gosh, it's just so tranquil and peaceful. (laughs) But the only reason that I don't work out during my morning routine is because I love to do that when my kids are awake. But it might be a perfect time for you and might bring you joy to get up and work out first thing when you get up. Number 10 is set a timer if you get carried away in, in things. If you are just getting started, it might not be a bad idea also to set a timer on each task that you're doing so you know that you'll have enough time to get through your whole routine and the amount of time that you're giving yourself, okay? So, hoof da, that was a lot. That was 10 tips. Now I wanna like rapid fire through habits that I think are amazing to implement into your morning routine to be a quote unquote better you, okay? So the quotes here, because there's what I feel makes me a better me, you might feel that doesn't work for you. So these are just habits that I think are amazing to implement into your morning mindset routine. They are drinking water first thing, having quiet time (laughs) with coffee, tea, pre-workout, or your water. Just take five minutes and just be. Writing your intentions or to-do list for the day. Sitting in meditation or prayer and prayer. I love to meditate first and then pray like in that same chunk of time. I, I anchor my meditation and prayer together. And journaling. Examples can include free journaling, your meditation, journal your meditation after journal your prayer. You could list affirmations, expressing gratitude, writing out your goals. Something else, another habit is looking at your goals and your why. And lastly, the last few here are reading. That could be another habit. And I suggest these towards the tail end if you still have that time or like if these are the only times that you have to do these things (laughs) are working out and showering. So if you work out or need to shower to start your day like my husband, incorporate that into your morning routine. And an added bonus like Pop on some personal development audio and listen while you're working out or listen while you shower. I can't listen to personal development when I work out. I'd rather have like rap music, like blasting. But when I shower, I would love, I love to listen to to personal development, some sort of audio or a book for that matter. And this is something that I do not suggest to have in your morning routine because I feel like I've said this enough, like I want this time to be for you, to connect to you. So I don't suggest doing household chores during your morning routine. But if it, again, if you have to do it during this time, pop in those earbuds and listen to a book or an audio book, okay? So like laundry, dishes, prepping lunches, prepping dinner, decluttering. I suggest keeping chores to a minimum or doing it very, very last And as it's a pretty mindless activity, you could do it before bed or while cooking or during a time that you don't necessarily, you know, it's, I just don't think it's a way to start your day to start it with chores, right? Like chores, they're always there, right? So do something that fills your cup during your morning mindset routine. Like your morning routine is for you to get done what matters to you. And personally, in my opinion, like chores can wait, but on the flip side, I do understand here that sometimes like I'm someone I can't mentally decompress with piling laundry and stuff. Like I get that, but that's why I do my laundry when the kids are eating or when I'm cooking or when my husband is home or before bed, like when I'm like already tired, right? Like I'll just do some chores or whatever. So I do suggest finding another time that might not be so sacred you time for chores. All right. I love doing, like I said, I love doing my chores when my kids are awake also to show them that it takes time to maintain a house or I wait for my husband to get home to watch the kids and then I could kind of get a little bit of a a break from momming, like that overstimulation. I can decompress and do some chores. Not ideal, but that's when I do my chores. (laughs) So a couple tips here to wrap is I suggest zero or very limited screen time during your morning routine. I sound like I'm talking to my kids about screen time, but it's very serious. Like, have you ever found yourself down a rabbit hole on your Instagram feed? It like just puts you in an instant off mood because of a comment that you saw or a post that you saw and just social media, like it is just such a time waster and energy suck. I do not suggest having that a part of your morning routine. Okay. You could find something that fills your cup that isn't social media or screen time related. Something else is I cannot emphasize enough to eat your biggest frog in the morning. 
If you tackle one thing in the morning, it should be that one thing that you've been procrastinating the most or take that time for your mindset. Okay, just get it done. You'll feel so much better after it's complete. Something else is to anchor your habits. Simply stated, you'll become more productive and efficient with your time if you anchor these morning routine habits together. I've stated the order of which I do things in the morning and without fail, it becomes habitual. That becomes your rhythm. So set a timer to start to get mindful of how long it takes you to do certain tasks and you'll find that rhythm soon enough. Your whole morning mindset routine will be an anchored rhythm so soon and I'm so excited for you. And lastly, find your ideal time to wake up. Again, ideally, this is about 50 to 90 minutes before your kids wake up. And once you get into that routine, set that wake up time to stick to it. Give yourself some grace in finding that sweet spot, finding your ideal bedtime, finding that ideal wake time. Keep your routine as simple as possible and something that brings you joy. And I'm just going to plug it again, that mindset work, because it's so often put on the back burner. Make it your you time to connect to you. Choose what fills your cup. Now walk it out. Remember, not only does your why breed motivation, so does action. Your why is going to help you show up on those hard days, but actually doing the things, getting consistent and doing the things that is going to bring you motivation. There, It's so... I don't want to get on another tangent here because we're already over a half hour and I want to keep these short for you, but... There's like that, there's so cliche, like the motivation and discipline, like some say like it's so rah-rah, but motivation, discipline, it's not something that you can find. It's something that you create, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with that first step. And that first step is so important, that commitment step, okay? So how do we take that first step without waiting for another Monday is just start with taking those baby steps And do that consistently every day. Small daily steps done consistently over time will bring you results. Think, an object in motion stays in motion. Thank you, Newton. (laughs) But it's so easier to adjust the course like mid-step than to get moving in the first place, right? So just start. Don't try to change your entire lifestyle, your entire schedule, your diet, anything completely overnight, right? It's just not realistic. And and it, it is completely overwhelming to try to change everything overnight. So decide on one baby step and just start there. Start waking up a little bit earlier and get consistent with it. A quote by Hal Elrod, author of Miracle Morning. He says, how you wake up each day and your morning routine or lack thereof dramatically affects your levels of success in every single area of your life. Focused, productive, and successful mornings generate focused, productive, successful days which inevitably create a successful life in the same way that unfocused, unproductive, and mediocre mornings generate unfocused, unproductive, and mediocre days, and ultimately a mediocre quality of life. By simply changing the way you wake up in the morning, you can transform any area of your life faster than you have ever thought possible. Bottom line, it is not to be perfect. If you've had trouble juggling all the commitments that come with being a mom, you are not alone. Whether you're managing your time as a stay-at-home mom or wondering how to get up before your kids before work, think of how you'd feel if you got done close to everything you said you wanted to do. Think of yourself after you do that morning mindset routine, the confidence that you're going to create, the feelings that you're going to generate, and imagine how you acted, how your best self would, would act around your kids and your family and that you are happier with less stress. The goal here is not perfection, but to learn more of who you are, what makes you tick, what triggers you, what brings you joy. And for the sake of all type A mamas out there, my hand up, productivity is one of them, right? I encourage you to find what feels good for you, what fits your season of life now. And go comment. (laughs) Go comment on this podcast graphic in our motherhood empowerment community if you want some help holding yourself accountable to this. How are you going to implement your ideal morning mindset routine? How are you going to start crafting your ideal morning mindset routine? And if you already have a morning routine or if you want to start implementing these habits, I want to know, right? Are you, are you going to make any changes or add anything to your day? I'd love for you to start a conversation in our motherhood empowerment community. And one final thing. 
I also have a freebie printable sheet that gives you a quick glance of all that we covered in this episode, the 10 things to tackle and creating your ideal morning routine and what habits I believe to be important in including in your morning routine. So you can head to www.naturallyempoweredliving.com forward slash free dash resources and enter your name and email to get a link to our motherhood empowerment community, as well as access to that principle and all the other freebie resources that I've created. So check the link in the show notes. If I just went through that link super fast, clickable link in the show notes. And thank you for being with me here again today. I am sending you so much love. Until next week, as always, simply be you. You have everything inside of you to reach your breakthrough, Mama. I'm sending my love and light. Did you find this episode very well worth a farming? Please wee Mama rip you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Balanced Mom Method Podcast. I pray this episode has grown and helped you in some way. If it has, I'd be so grateful if you left a review sharing how it's impacted you. It truly lights me up hearing you're on your way to your breakthrough. And then, please share this episode with another mom who may be struggling to remind her we are never alone. And remember, there isn't ever a one-size-fits-all to overcoming our personal hardships, but there are a lot of parallels with how we show up to our lives and common habits we can make our own to live an intentional life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, and balance. Be sure to check the show notes for additional ways to connect with me, our mom community, and resources and courses for you to overcome your survival mode cycle once and for all with doable habits. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do. Sending my love and light.